We've been very privileged today to welcome Dr. Don Kuba to the European Parliament to a meeting with our group. Uh, he is an emeritus professor at Purdue University in Indiana and has done a tremendous amount of work on GM crops. And uh, we've had a, a fascinating meeting this morning. Um, Dr. Huber, you have been traveling all around Europe. Yes, I've appreciated the opportunity to share our concerns, but to see the beautiful countries that mm. we've been privileged to visit. And uh, really appreciate the hospitality that's been extended and the willingness to listen to the concerns that uh, I bring to you. The evidence that you have, have put together um, is uh, very enlightening and of course will inform our work here in the Parliament. Can you outline some of, of the main concerns that you have about GM crops and about pesticides? Yes, uh, what we're seeing today is very different in our agricultural production than we saw 30 years ago or even 15 years ago and those changes have actually come about to challenge our sustainability both in our crop production and our animal production and we're seeing that reflected now in the increased human diseases that many people say are of unknown origin or unknown cause but we can trace them back if we understand what the effects of glyphosate are and how it works and also what the genetic engineering process is. So with glyphosate, it's a very powerful herbicide, but it works by increasing susceptibility of plants to disease. And residues in feed and in food also reduce our resistance to disease and the environmental stresses that are so common from weather or cold, temperature, or moisture, those things that they influence disease, but it's how they, they fit into the agricultural system. So that if we understand that the genetic engineering process doesn't do anything to the glyphosate, it only increases the, or makes it possible for us to apply glyphosate to that genetically engineered plant. And, but we need to recognize that we still have all of the effects of glyphosate in reducing the availability of nutrients that are required for our health and nutrition as well as the health of our animals and the health of our plants. Mm -hmm. We've recently uh, been seeing a, a great increase in epidemics and severity of disease. Right now we're in our fourth year of major epidemic for uh, Goss's wilt, a bacterial disease on corn. Very weak pathogen in the past that now is a very serious problem mm -hmm. and also in uh, sudden death syndrome on soybeans caused by fusarium as a soil-borne fungus. We also have the fusarium head blight and the increasing levels of toxin and a number of other diseases that are all documented in the scientific literature to be increased by the uh, application of glyphosate because that's how glyphosate works is to predispose plants to these pathogens that are always present in the soil that we've had to deal with and manage for centuries, now they're becoming very serious problems for us because our old management techniques aren't as effective as they used to be. Can I thank you very, very much for sharing all of this information with us this morning. And the presentation is available for anyone who would like to, to find out more, to have the facts and the figures, to use this information, then please contact us at the group and we can provide the information to you. Thank you very Again, much. Thank and you. It's all true. the very best with your work. Yeah, thank it's you. truly an honor to be here and I'm very grateful for the time that you've taken out of your very busy schedule and interest to let me share those Thank concerns you. that are becoming very real. Thank you very much.